Major lines today. For the first time, you can buy marijuana legally in parts of Colorado, purely for recreational use. Tonight, there's already talk of shortages and a different kind of after effect, new jobs. ABC's Clayton Sandell in Denver. Have your IDs ready. They lined up before dawn. We drove 17 hours to get here. Some sleeping in their cars. Well, it's a historical event. For a chance to be early through the door at one of the world's very first recreational marijuana shops. Even in Amsterdam, it's tolerated but technically illegal. 8 a.m., we're going to do it. Scoring weed now as easy as buying coffee. Sean, your total is $59.74. Anyone over 21 can buy it, helping fuel a Colorado green rush. We want to be the Costco of marijuana. In the first year alone, sales are predicted to hit nearly $400 million. This room is filled with about 25 different strains of cannabis. Shop owner Tony Fox is expanding and hiring. Today, she has nine employees. By the end of January, we should have about 30. Matt Brown started a company for pot tourists. He has 4,000 people on a waiting list. This is legal, this is real, and you can do this and have a good vacation and go home and not get in trouble. But not everyone is on board. Marijuana is still a federal crime. There are worries about increasing teen pot use and driving while high. Even ski resorts here worried about a family-friendly image are warning stoners to stay off the slopes. Here in public, it is legal. Here's your receipts. Other states are now watching to see how this new experiment works out as marijuana moves from underground to mainstream. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Denver. He did indeed treat a vodka that tasted like no other. If you think all vodka is the same, take a sip of our premium vodka and think again. opportunity to address you on this important issue today. My name is Garrett Enan. I traveled here from Keene, New Hampshire. I grew up here in Concord, where I spent the greater portion of my young life, and where I started the blog freeconcord.org, where I continue to publish content. While personally I may find myself partial to identifying as an activist, we all know how limiting labels can be. Not wishing to limit myself, I think it's important to recognize the numerous qualities different styles of activism can take on. Any individual who captures a piece of raw video or audio content in public has committed an act of journalism. The circumstances of the capture only add to or subtract from its relevance, but they make something that is truly a contribution to society. Sometimes these records can change society. Um, let's consider the Rodney King beating or the Kelly Thomas killing that happened recently. The fact that there is documentation of what actually happened that the actors in the case were not aware of means that we're better able to know what crimes are happening in our society and happening in our names, too. When we think of New Hampshire's current confusing statute, let us consider who benefits from how it is manipulated by those in power. It seems that everyone here is confused by it as well. Um, the police are far from being experts on the law. I've lost count of how many police I've had to correct on this law. It got to a point where after I had a phone unlawfully wrenched out of my hand while I was recording in public, that I printed out these little cards with the wiretapping statute on them so I could read them to officers whenever they got it wrong. I've had to pull out this card way too many times. Um, I wish I could say the phone confiscation was the uh, only incident, it was three years ago, where I've had experience with police acting unlawfully under the guise of the statute, but unfortunately it's not. I've had friends serve months in jail for recording phone conversations while they were doing journalistic reports. Um, you've all heard of what happened to Joe Hamill. Um, I wish to invite you to search out his story, check out the Concord Monitor article, and see how horrible it is what happened to him. He was victimized to the extent that he felt he had to leave town. Um, and this was for overtly recording a Concord bureaucrat. It's not even illegal under the current law. Um, it's been brought up about uh, Robin Hooding and Keene. I was very disappointed with Miss Rice, who mischaracterized Robin Hooding and Keene. Um, 
And Representative Robertson, I'd also invite you to come Robin Hooding with us if you think that we yell at parking enforcers or we get within two feet of them or anything like that. That's nonsense. The court agreed that we stay within uh, the rights and under the guide, uh, boundaries of the law. So um, yeah, I'd invite people to come out Robin Hooding if they think that anything unruly is going on. Um, but unfortunately, uh, as many of you know, myself and my friends were sued by the city of Keene for our activities of filling meters. Um, we weren't sued for filling the meters and denying the city of revenue. We were sued in the name of contractual interference. Um, the alleged contractual interference was that we were trying to get parking enforcers to quit their jobs. I never said I wanted parking enforcers to quit their jobs. I was just out filling meters, having conversations. Uh, but somehow my name got dragged into that lawsuit too. So I wanted to have a meeting with the city attorney prior to this case going to court. So back in May, I met with city attorney Tom Mullins. And he said he would meet with me to discuss the case as long as it wasn't audio recorded, but that it was allowed to be on the record and I could take notes. So I met with him, I took extensive notes, and then I created a mock-up transcript of our meeting. A few weeks later, I'm about to go out to go Robin Hooding one morning, my friends and my roommates are on the porch, and we notice that there's an unmarked state police car that's circling the block, not being very conspicuous. Um, I snap some photos of this car and it drives off after seeing me. So uh, then I headed downtown. When, when I got about a block away from my house, the car was waiting to ambush me and did. Uh, two state troopers in plain clothes got out of the car, never said my name, but ordered me to stop and said that they had a warrant for me, that they were seizing all of my electronic devices. Fortunately, all I had on me at the time was my beloved Canon Vixia. This was confiscated and spent two months in police custody. When it was returned to me, I noticed there was some vandalism. They'd written in Sharpie underneath it. Um, there was never any evidence of a crime. In fact, I wasn't even allowed to know why it was that my camera was taken for about a month and a half, because the warrant was sealed. Why was the warrant sealed? Was this a case in which there were confidential informants that maybe whose identities needed protected? Absolutely not. In fact, the warrant didn't really have anything that constituted probable cause in it. The only reason my camera and my electronic devices were taken from me, uh, well, only my device ended up getting confiscated, but uh, the only reason was that the city attorney alleged that I must have remembered too much of the conversation. I don't know about you guys, but I have a background in criminal justice. I went to school for criminology, and that doesn't sound like probable cause to me. Your, your account of an, an interaction looks too accurate, so we're going to <laughs> seize your electronics. They found no evidence that there was any illegal recording, and needless to say, I'm following up with an attorney on that. Um, the, the Robin Hood case has been brought up, and the idea of uh, the other, some of the other speakers, uh, Ms. Rice, uh, the, the last gentleman, they began to conflate audio recording with assault. They began to say, well, if we allow people to audio record, they're just going to get up in people's faces. They're just going to stick cameras in people's cars. It'll be chaos. Assault is still illegal. Holding things in front of someone's face is still a form of assault or threatening. You're not supposed to behave in that manner. So the idea that people who do use these journalistic tools would somehow become criminals if they had more freedoms to use the tools. That's ludicrous. Um, so, in addition to uh, Robin Hooding, one of the activities I engage in that involves a lot of videotaping, I also participated in the 2013 Police Accountability Tour with my good friend Pete Eyre. We traveled around the country and went to different places where there were issues, instances of police abuse and tried to follow up on those stories. Unfortunately, there's a major chilling effect here in New Hampshire. You can't covertly record in many places. Now, taking into account that in police stations they have signs up on the walls that say you're being audio and video recorded, you don't have to inform anyone if you're recording there, it's understood. But all it took was uh, myself and my friend Pete walking into a police station in New Orleans and a press release went out by the police there saying that there are these people in town, they record police, be careful. Now the thing is, New, uh, New Orleans and Louisiana have some of the most corrupt authorities probably in the world. We were investigating stories where the police were killing people, disposing of bodies, having people, uh, their, their uh, superiors covering up. the bail, please? Okay, sure. It was kind of scary reporting on those incidents of people that kill people, yet I felt safe knowing that I couldn't be bothered for recording because Louisiana is a single party consent state. It's not illegal to record other people there. And considering the amount of corruption, it's so important there that people are able to record their interactions with others. This uh, two-party recording being labeled wiretapping, it's a misapplication of the word. Wiretapping implies that there is some sort of, like, going into someone's electronics, hacking, etc. The idea that you can record just walking around and that's wiretapping, 
Where's the wire involved? Another reason this law is absurd is uh, it's archaic, it's misguided, because anybody can unintentionally violate it. Anybody that has a camera, a video, still photo, you're going to accidentally shoot some video, record some audio that you didn't need to record. And then you'll notice and you probably just delete it. There's a saying, the camera is the new gun. If you accidentally discharge a firearm, it's a big deal. If you accidentally discharge a camera, it's not. It's perfectly safe. So that's why the, all right, uh, getting, to, getting to my conclusion, there's this, this item is more threatening to the corrupt officials or just corrupt individuals, criminals, than a firearm or any other combat weapon. This tool can get you thrown in prison in New Hampshire, yet it's able to expose the crimes of other people in a way that nothing else can. If I'm able to see something, if I'm able to hear it, it is my human right to document it. Unfortunately, my eyes can't record and my ears can't record, but human beings have worked and now we have the technology and the tools. Let us use them. Um, so, another revelation that's come up in the past year. We're all being spied on, we're all being wiretapped all the time. We now know this. We didn't know this a year ago, but it's been released thanks to a brave man named Edward Snowden. The state that claims to protect us, the empire in DC, is violating New Hampshire law, presumably. But I don't really mind that because I don't think the law is legitimate. However, it is important to recognize that if something can be recorded, we should understand that it could be recorded, which means I want to be able to record it as well. I can under the current law. Um, please do the right thing and recognize that this bill is weak but well intended and that New Hampshire should move in the direction of one party consent. That is in the interest of promoting journalistic freedom. And think of, uh, you can't do certain journalistic reports in New Hampshire. You can't do uh, a report going into a place that maybe is, is doing bad business deals and record what they're doing because it's illegal. It's illegal to do journalism. Um, if for some reason you aren't interested in legalizing recording for residents of New Hampshire, I would invite you to please send a public message to the powers in the District of Columbia that you no longer require their services. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I, is your job an investigator from what you were telling me of your testimony? Sure, I've played that passage before. No, I mean, are you a registered investigator that somebody would I've never been paid for investigations, no. Oh, are you a registered Representative Bell, of course. Oh, I think we all are investigators. We've heard it said know. that the pen is mightier than the sword. I think we have a new device that's mightier than the sword that we have to know about. But I'm, I'm really interested in what you commented about the police following you in Keene and claiming you had too good a memory. So yes. apparently, uh, even mightier than the sword of the camera is somebody with a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. So I guess President Woodrow Wilson and Richard Nixon would have been a good trouble, big trouble because they had a pretty good memory. What, what happened when, what was the final upshot of them stopping you for doing what you described seems like something that was not illegal. Well, they were investigating to see whether or not I had possibly wiretapped that ah. meeting, um, which I don't understand if it, whether or not it would have even been illegal to record it, but they have no evidence that it was recorded. They seized my camera with the intention of finding such evidence, but such evidence does not exist. Is it, if I may follow, is it your contention that you would not have had this problem if this law had been in effect? It's, it's possible I still would have had that problem because I think this, this bill says something about overtly recording. I think covertly recording needs to be protected as well. It's important that people are able to make objective records of their interactions with others. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. I will call Barbara Haney. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Laura Haney and I represent American Federation of Teachers in New Hampshire. Um, we don't just represent teachers, but we represent police officers over in Keene and the public employees over in Keene. Um, we are opposed to this bill. Um, we represented those parking meters, parking attendants over in Keene. Um, I believe them when they said that they were physically, they felt physically threatened. Um, that, um, that, and I also believe that this, this bill is just a tool <coughs> for certain people to go out and do more damage to our public employees. We need to have a voice, our public employees need to have a voice. The unintended consequences to this I can see, 
teachers or public officials, they're paid by the tax dollars. Does this mean that these people are going to show up at our schools and start videotaping the teachers and the school children? I think it's just an overreach. Um, I think it's unneeded. Um, the case Owen Keene is going up to the next court. Um, those people, and I and I agree with the attorney Gray saying that you know you have to define that that physical um, force. It's not just touching. Them. These people, the parking uh, attendants would go to the bathroom, they'd be called. Uh, there was also a time that there was some stuff done outside of police officers' homes in the as well. This is wrong. Someone has to stand up and, and have a voice for that public employee who's out there doing their job and trying to do it well. Um, and they need some protection from, from people that um, go overboard. And I think this bill will let them go overboard um, on their actions. So I ask that you want to be able to Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. If, as Attorney Rice has suggested, she could work on language that would address some of your concerns, we don't want anybody being followed in the bathrooms or things like that, would you then support this bill or a similar bill? I would have to talk to my um, members of the team. Thank you. That's something that they would want. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I'll call uh, Ivan Friedman. What gives you the right to decide what people sell in terms of plants? Well, everybody has a right to their own opinion. This is America. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... You the town council? Yes, sir. Got a question for you. Um, and assuming you weren't the lone dissenting vote last time on this pot thing. I was, and I was in the majority. Oh, okay, so uh, you, d you voted not to let people sell pot here for recreational use? I did vote for that. What gives you the right to decide what people sell in terms of plants? Well, everybody has a right to their own opinion. This is America, and so everybody can have varying opinions. In my opinion, because of the research that I've done and my past experience from the 60s and 70s, it led me to believe from all the research that it's not as innocent as it claims to be. Well, does it have to be innocent for it to be lawful? Well, no, not exactly, but uh, it's a fact that two years ago the government of Holland, this is a fact, you can Google it, the government of Holland declared marijuana a hard drug along with cocaine because of the increasing THC levels. And as the years went by and the THC levels increased, so did the admissions into the mental hospitals and the emergency rooms for acute marijuana intoxication. And so if the government of Holland, one of the most liberal countries on the planet, declares this hybrid high-potency marijuana a hard drug, it should give us in America pause to re-examine the research and decide what's best health-wise for our citizens. Do you have any concerns about the fact that the more illegal it is, the more people use it? Well, it's not illegal. That's what everybody's well, confusing. I said the more illegal it is. It's not illegal. Everybody in Colorado has a right to possess it and grow it. We're just talking about shops, recreational marijuana shops. That's all we're talking about. Just talking so, about you're just so we talking can't blend about, the two issues. You're just talking about killing business. We're just separating the two issues. With the, with the economy like it is, should you be preventing businesses from opening? Uh, well, we're not worried about the economy because it'll take care of itself. And we're concerned about property values, we're concerned about tax-paying citizens, we're concerned about people here in Palmer Lake being upside down on their mortgages if shops proliferate in the area uh, because it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to sell their homes because what family with kids in their right minds will move into Palmer Lake if these shops are on the corners? People live in Amsterdam, people live all over yeah, Portugal. But again, the government of Holland <laughs> declared it a hard drug, and now they're trying to bring the THC levels back down because of the health issues. Well, you know THC levels go up when something becomes illegal. It becomes more potent. Well, but then, but you well know in the free enterprise system, the higher potency, the more business you're going to get. And so that drives the THC levels up, too, because you're competing with the guy down the street that's selling the same product. All right. I appreciate you answering my questions. Okay. Could I have your name? Michael Maddox. Okay, Mr. Maddox, I'll see you in there. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thanks much. Okay.
just say Who are you it's with? Dave Ridley with RidleyReport.com. Only got two fingers left. Sorry. Okay. All it's right. a poor man's TV station. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Are you the town councilman? Uh, question for you. Uh, assuming you weren't the lone dissenting vote last time. I on pot. I was not the lone dissenting. I was dissenting though. So I didn't. I do not agree with it. You didn't. You didn't agree. You were. You were the one that voted against the four. Is that right? No, I'm one of the four who voted against having it. I see. Uh, what gives you the right to decide what people sell in terms of plants? Well, it's a community, so it's not really my right to determine what they can sell. It's protecting my community and the people that are in it. From I mean, commerce? From the commerce. Well, it's not so much the sellers that are the problem, it's the buyers. Moving to New Hampshire, right? Are you willing to initiate force against taxpayers to make them underwrite your enforcement protocols? This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Democratic People's Republic of Keene. Gifts of love and friendship around Earth appear from leaders of most obedient good people of human existence. so much the sellers that are the problem, it's the buyers and, and those people who create the problems. The sellers are just sitting back making money. Not all sellers are users themselves. A lot of them aren't. Is it your business what people are putting in their bodies? If it's, if it's again well, just a plant? Well, it, it isn't just a plant. I don't believe it is. I work in the healthcare field, so I guess it becomes my business at a point when they become my patient. Are you willing to initiate force against taxpayers to make them underwrite your enforcement protocols? It's not about forcing, it's about what the community decides. They're going to be the ones voting on it. We're just going to be the ones that enforce the rules to protect the rest of the community from those decisions. Well, if I were a Palmer resident and I withheld taxes to protest this, you wouldn't come after me? Can I? Well, you personally might not be able to, but the town would. I don't know. I'd have to cross that bridge when I got there. Right now, there is no definite decision. And right, all we're doing today is discussing. We're not making any decisions right now. All right. Well, I appreciate you answering my tough questions. Relatively tough. Hi, See you in there. How are you? Oh, it's good to see you. It will not be a really charming veteran community anymore, and that will be gone forever. That's my biggest concern, and that's my biggest concern to the council. There was, uh, I, I, I agree with you. There was two stores in town, as you all know. One of them is gone. Okay, that store is was here closer to Palmer Lake Plowfer. My store, like I said, is three miles from here. I think that it will it will be. Uh, how, how it is. There will be some additional traffic into the town. People are not going to drive. I mean, to, to get to Palm Lake, that opportunity today is my point. Yes. It has always been a concern that we do not have any tax revenue to keep our town going. And I do not see why anyone would be worried about a little bit of traffic, since we have all seen the traffic that we have on 4th of July around here, would impact your life so negatively that the tax money isn't worth it. It, it makes no sense to, these, to me or to anyone else who really understands that we need the money and we should not be sending it to Pueblo or to Denver. We need to keep it in our own community 
where we need it. Thank you. I <clears throat> lived in Palmer Lake 10 years. I don't care if that number is $60,000 a day. We were a town long before recreational marijuana. I don't want it, period. I don't care what the tax benefits are. Yeah. And I, I agree on, on the with the, the revenue. I mean, at some point, we need revenue, and the revenue gets here in vehicles. Whether it, they're going to the villa or they're going to La Rosa, the money has to come in. We don't have enough people going to the local businesses that live in Palmer Lake to support all this. It's not whether it's marijuana or ice cream. We need to figure out what that balance is. I'd like to address uh, you, sir, in the back for just a second. Uh, first responder people that went in to clear the homes and get the people out. They counted 121 illegal grows. I can show um, First of all, uh, just a quick question to Tara. The $6,000 that you claim is supposed to be coming to us every day is still going to be coming to us from the state. Isn't that what you're saying? No. 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 We don't get money. We don't sell no. Unless you want to get it. Okay. okay. Jay? Um, my big thing is people need to vote. Uh, my understanding is that the last election that was not well attended, so push people to vote and then whatever happens, happens. That's the way our country works. Yep. So vote, tell your people to vote, and then hopefully you'll get your, what you want. If you don't, that's life. Two states are putting this on the ballot, on their ballots. Once. 48, no, what, I mean not 30, 18 states are putting it on their ballot coming up. Once 32 states approve it, it is federal law. I, in my heart, believe it's here. It's not going to go away. It's, I mean, for whatever reason, I think it's going to be like, you know, the days of prohibition. I mean, I can't see that this isn't going to be a federal law at some point. Hello, so you're associated with the city of Keene in some manner? Yeah, I'm the president of the American Federation of Teachers. Okay, so uh, I was wondering, you said some allegations that Robin Hooders had followed individuals into the sure. bathroom. Um, I know I've never engaged in that. I know none of my friends that I'm aware of have ever engaged in that. Do you mind if I ask the source of those allegations? I mean, if you have concern with my behavior or the behavior of my friends, I would think telling me about it, like us discussing it, would be the best way of dealing with it rather than, rather than ignoring. I mean, if you have an issue with my friends or what we're doing, like, you can't address it with us. I've always been respectful of the parking enforcers, and I'll continue to be, despite people saying bad things. Well, um, the rural person has to, you know, we had a really successful year rock thing this year, 2013. And, you know, I guess we, we beat Prince John in tennis court, so now he wants to go to the basketball court. We won by default. They never showed up. Those courts are still empty today. There's no one playing on them. There's snow on them. Well, maybe we can have an indoor court in Concord. Yes, I hear that there's some fancy pants courts. We might have connections there. You gotta get your game on.